If you have benefited from resources produced by G3 Ministries, would you consider donating to support us? Even a few dollars helps us to continue to publish free curricula, articles, podcasts, video resources, and more. Visit g3min.org slash give or open the G3 app to give a one-time or monthly donation. Articles from G3 Ministries John Gill and the Loosing of Satan Written by Chipley McQueen Thornton Revelation 20, verse 7 and 8a. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out and deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. Revelation 20, verses 7 and 8 present one of the greatest difficulties for Gill's glorified saints only millennial kingdom concept. That is, if all the wicked are slain in Revelation 19, then who are the nations Satan deceives in Revelation 20? The deceived nations. Gill made clear all those in the millennial kingdom are like the angels. They neither marry nor procreate. These deceived nations then must come from somewhere else. Where? Gill's answer runs along these lines. First, these nations do not refer to the Gog and Magog in Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39. Ezekiel spoke to a specific people in his own time. Gill suggests, however, that John alluded to Gog and Magog because they came to represent God's enemies in all ages. Second, These nations are the wicked who spring to life in the second resurrection. In his timeline, this occurs at the end of the thousand years. Gill states, quote, The second resurrection, the resurrection of all the wicked that have been from the beginning of the world, and these with the posse of devils under Satan will make up the Gog and Magog army. End quote. The deceived nations, then, are all reprobates from all time. They will rise bodily with sound and fury, their souls having been pent up with rage for a thousand years. Third, they will rise from where they died. Just as the saints will rise from where they died at the beginning of the thousand years, the wicked will do likewise at the end of the thousand years. Gill comments, quote, Where they die and are buried, there they'll rise and stand upon their feet an exceeding great army. Close quote. Then they will organize themselves for the last battle. Fourth, they will foment with terrific rage. Think of it. Whether wicked kings, queens, generals, psychopaths, or anyone else who knew not Christ in this life, they will have a thousand years of burning rage, with Satan himself whipping them into a frenzy. He will fill their minds with heresies, falsities, slanders, and wicked thoughts about our Lord Jesus Christ. Gill describes them this way, quote, Their envy, malice, and revenge will be heightened and increased by their confinement and punishment in hell. Nor need this be wondered at, since the devils retain the same enmity as ever. And though the deception will be very great, to attack saints in an immortal state, who are like the angels that die not, yet it need not seem strange when they will rise as weak and feeble and as little able to resist temptation and as much exposed to seduction as they were before. End quote. In other words, the same Satan who deceived them in this life will keep deceiving them after the second resurrection. Fifth, 
they will be emboldened by their vast numbers. They will rise from the dead to see untold billions of resurrected reprobates licking their lips with greedy madness. This sight will feed their lust for revenge all the more. Gill explains, quote, Satan will have as much power over them as ever. And what with their own numbers and the posse of devils at the head of them, and especially considering the desperateness of their state, and that this is their last struggle and effort for liberty, they will animate themselves and one another to this strange undertaking. These being all the enemies of Christ and his people, both secret and open, and this sense well accounts for their number being as the sand of the sea. End quote. Bloodthirsty and energized by their massive numbers, they will seek to slaughter Christ's saints to no avail. Reflections. The question, who are the deceived nations, always has plagued historic premillennialists. John Piper once suggested, perhaps God spared the children from being slain in Revelation 19, verse 21, and they flowed into the thousand-year reign to become the nations Satan deceives. However, that doesn't completely satisfy either. Gill himself scoffs at the notion of one scholar in his day who speculated humans, quote, will be born of the earth, generated from the slime of the ground and the heat of the sun, close quote. The question is a difficult one. Gill's solution is not a bad one exegetically. Basically, he takes verse 5b and 6 as a parenthetical aside. The thought picks up again in verse 7. If we set aside the parenthetical for a moment, it reads this way. The rest of the dead, that is the wicked, did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations. This is feasible, makes logical sense, and honors the Apostle John's thought flow. Exegetically, it works, although we'd prefer it to be a bit more buttoned up than that. Every other position has its flaws, too. On the one hand, ah mills and post mills must take the thousand as figurative, which causes them also to interpret the terms bound, verse 2, sealed, verse 3, and in prison, verse 7, as Satan possessing limited influence in present times. On the other hand, progressive dispensationalists take the thousand as literal, but their millennial kingdom looks much different than Gill's. They have, number one, glorified immortal saints living alongside, number two, mortal unbelievers, and number three, mortal saints saved during the thousand years all in the millennial kingdom together. Gill's view, at least to me, has the least glaring flaws. Number one, Satan bound in prison. Number two, only glorified saints enjoy a thousand years with Christ on the earth he created and restored. Number three, Satan is released and the wicked rise bodily to make war on Christ. And number four, Christ defeats them once and for all. Can you imagine it? All the evil from all of time, demons and men, concentrated on planet Earth at the same time. From murderous Cain to unrepentant Esau, wicked Pharaoh, bloodthirsty Jezebel, the traitorous Judas Iscariot, demented Nero, 
Hitler, Mussolini, Saddam Hussein, Charles Manson, the world's most brilliantly evil masterminds, all alive, all on earth at the same time, all in lockstep together. Yet all the evil that ever existed will not be able to touch a single Christian saint. Our King, Jesus Christ Himself, will bring down fire from heaven to consume them. Revelation 20, verse 9. What a remarkable scene that would be if Gil is correct.